So, what were some of your inspirations for the film? Uh, our biggest inspiration uh, was all of the brick films and homemade things that uh, Lego fans make uh, on their own, you know, online and at home. We wanted the movie to feel like it kind of had a grassroots origin. And so um, we just loved pouring over all the, like, the crazy little films people were making. And we thought if we can make a big version of that, we will have won. Um, tell us about a little about the visuals and the look you wanted to have and why you went with the photo reel. <laughs> well, yeah, we had this idea that we wanted everything to look uh, photo reel and like it was a Lego set that, that came to life and we wanted everything in the movie to be made out of Lego bricks, including the water and fire and clouds and, and people looked at us like we were crazy, like how, how could you even do that? But uh, we really believed in it, and uh, and luckily everybody came on board eventually. Uh, but it was a lot of work. Um, you know, the movie was <coughs> a lot of CG, some uh, stop motion, some actual Lego bricks mixed in there. We didn't want anyone to know what was what. It was a real hybrid, um, and a lot of the the research went into figuring out how to make it look imperfect, like it had smudges and thumbprints and scratches and dust and dandruff and all that type of stuff. And then the, the movement had to had to feel as limited as it would be if you were making it yourself in a basement. And then, and then of course, all the, the research as to how to make an ocean out of Lego is, is something you've never seen before. Okay. Um, now the production took three years. I believe. Mm -hmm. Could you give us a, break, a basic breakdown of how that was and what kept you inspired <laughs> all of that time? <coughs> uh, fear kept us inspired <laughs> <laughs> much of the time. Um, you know, uh, you know the, the way you make an animated movie is, you know, you write it, but then you start putting it up on storyboards, and uh, you start editing it, and then you start to realize that what you wrote is terrible, so you start over, <laughs> um, and then you come up with a whole new story, and then that's terrible, and you slowly, you know, through many, many terrible versions, you start to, like, get enough material to, like, string together a final movie. Um, so, you know, the inspiration just comes from the collaboration with other people. You know, that, that like, when you run out of ideas, there's this guy. <laughs> and when he I runs out know. of ideas, there's a bunch of other people. <laughs> and we all kind of get together and inspire one another. And it was an international production. And so we had the animation studio was in Australia, this company, Animal Logic. We had a co-director, Chris McKay, who moved down there to oversee the animation. And there was a lot of video conferencing. And then we also had uh, the help of the, the Lego group in Denmark who were helping us with designs and, and, and if we got stuck on something we would send it over to them and say, we can't figure out how to make this metal beard guy like move around and work right. And they're like, leave it to us, we're experts at this. And they would work on it. And then it was a back and forth between uh, Los Angeles, uh, Australia, and Denmark. And so it was a real, it, it was a lot of video conferencing. <laughs> Now, were you Lego fans growing up? Yeah, uh, of course. Um, I don't know if you can tell. I know that it's hard to believe that these <laughs> um, Adonis bodies uh, would have spent any time indoors. Whatsoever. Indoors, we, you know, we were very busy being the quarterbacks of our respective football teams. However, we still found the time to go into our our bedrooms by ourselves <laughs> and play with toys. Um, yeah, we were big Lego fans as kids, and we were both really into classic space from the 70s and 80s. Those were the sets that we had a lot of in, in a big old bin making the crazy spaceships and things. And so we tried to put that in the movie. There's a character, Benny, the 1980-something space guy, who's really just straight out of our childhoods. That's great. Now, what are some of the ways that you sought to engage adults, adults into the audience for this film? Uh, we wanted to tell a real story, and we felt like... Um, that was the only way this thing was going to hang together. We, we wanted to make a movie that felt like an eight-year-old made it up. Um, <laughs> but we thought you would get really sleepy uh, if uh, the story didn't um, really grab you. Um, so that was the, the, the main focus. And then uh, the, our humor, we approached the same way for doing a, a family movie or an R-rated comedy. Just one doesn't have uh, swear words in it. <laughs> Um, yeah. We really just try to make each other laugh, um, and luckily our sense of humor is juvenile enough that it also makes kids <laughs> laugh too. <clears throat> now, what are the bigger themes of the of the story of the film? Uh, well, the the movie is about uh, Emmett, who is a you know a very average generic construction worker who's just like everybody else, and 
then he gets tapped and mistaken for the chosen one, the most special person in the universe, the savior of the world. And we thought it was really interesting to tell a, a hero's journey story like that. But instead of it being Neo who has all of these powers that are, are just about to be unlocked, it's a guy who is not special at all. <laughs> and just the mere fact that he's told that he is, is the thing that activates something that we hope is in everybody, you know, mm -hmm. a, a creative ability that just needs a little bit of encouragement. And we hope the movie inspires people to get back in touch with their creative side and, and go out and build and make things and innovate. Fantastic. What do you think is the appeal of Lego generation after generation? <clears throat> well, um, it's made of plastic and plastic lasts a really long time. <laughs> um, so that doesn't hurt. Uh, it's incredibly well made, so you know, if you take a brick you know, from the 60s, you can fit it with a brick from 2014. Um, and it's really flexible. And so it's able to change with the times and you can turn it into what you want. And you know, it, there's, there's uh, you know, uh, like a Lego city that, or, uh, or a Lego castle themes that are from the Middle Ages. And there's like Lego Prince of Persia and there's like things that are more contemporary. And if you have a big old bin of bricks, you can make whatever you want out of it. If someone wants to make a house and another person wants to make a dinosaur, then they can have a dinosaur attacking a house and, and it can be whatever you make of it. And that's, that'll never go out of style. Yeah.